Welcome to section three of genetics. In this section, we'll be discussing linkage disequilibrium. Let's get started. In order to understand linkage disequilibrium, we first need to understand a few basic principles. Let's start with independent assortment. Independent assortment refers to the idea that chromosomes segregate independently of one another during meiosis. Because chromosomes segregate independently, it can be deduced that alleles that are located on separate chromosomes also segregate independently. In other words, the alleles are sorted into gametes independently of one another. This is a figure of independent assortment which can be found in section 3 of genetics. Notice from the figure that this is a spermatogonium and that the cells shown below are spermatids. In males, spermatogonia divide through meiosis to become spermatids with half of the genetic information. Eventually, the spermatids fuse with an oocyte and form a zygote. Although this image is showing independent assortment in males, the same process also occurs in females. In this figure, only two sets of homologous chromosomes are shown in the spermatogonium. So notice that there is a paternal version of chromosome 1, as well as a maternal version of chromosome 1. These are called homologous chromosomes. So in this figure, there are homologous chromosomes for chromosomes 1 and Two. In reality, there are 23 homologous chromosomes, but we've only shown two here for simplicity. Okay, notice that there is a capital A shown on one of the chromosomes and a lowercase a shown on the other. The letter A represents a gene and the capital versus lowercase letters represent alleles. So the letter B then represents a different type of gene. For example, the A gene could determine eye color and the B gene could determine hair color. The capital A allele could result in brown eye color, and the lowercase a allele could result in blue eye color. Hopefully you get the idea. It's important for you to understand the difference between a gene and an allele. Because each of the alleles are on different chromosomes, they separate independently of one another. Notice that during meiosis, the chromosomes are separated, resulting in four different possibilities. Big A, big B, big A, little b, little a, big b, and finally, little a, little b. In other words, there's an equal probability of inheriting any of the alleles because they're randomly separated during meiosis. This idea is referred to as independent assortment. Okay, with this background, let's discuss linkage equilibrium. Linkage refers to the idea that two alleles are located on the same chromosome. In other words, they're physically linked together. Linkage equilibrium refers to the idea that the frequency of alleles inherited from one parent in a given population have the same value that they would have if the alleles at each locus were combined at random. This sounds a little confusing, so let's do a question to see how this is applied. Two regions on the same chromosome are sequenced using PCR. The frequency of the corresponding alleles are then analyzed in a population. The frequency of allele A is found to be 0.5 and the frequency of allele B is 0.5. Assuming normal linkage equilibrium, what is the expected frequency of AB? Okay, from the question stem, we learn that in this particular population, allele A occurs half of the time and allele B occurs the other half of the time. If these two alleles are in linkage equilibrium, then we can assume that the probability of them being inherited together is 0.25. So 0.5 times 0.5 equals 0.25. Let's pull up an image so you can see why. This is a figure of linkage equilibrium, which can be found in section three of genetics. In the figure illustrating independent assortment, we could see two sets of homologous chromosomes, chromosomes one and two. In this figure, however, we can only see one set of homologous chromosomes. So this chromosome represents the paternal chromosome one, and this represents the maternal chromosome one. Notice that in this image, the alleles big A and big B are now on the same chromosome rather than separate chromosomes. This is a critical point to understand. Linkage equilibrium refers to alleles that are on the same chromosome. You might think that based on the law of independent assortment, big A and big B would always be inherited together because they're on the same chromosome. However, this is not true and can be explained by recombination. During meiosis, segments of the chromosomes break and are transferred to the homologous chromosome. This means that even if two alleles are on the same chromosome, they may not always be inherited together. It's important to know that when two alleles on the same chromosome are far apart from one another, which is the case in this image, they behave as if they were on separate chromosomes. So notice the distance between big A, big B. The two genes are very far apart. This means recombination is very likely to occur. In other words, alleles that are on the same chromosome but far apart from one another are said to be in linkage equilibrium. This is because there's an equal probability of inheriting each allele just as if each allele were on a different chromosome. Notice from the figure that there's a 25% chance of inheriting each of the possibilities. Big A, big B, little a, little b, little a, big b, and big A, little b. So if we look at the question again, we can see that the allele big A and big B are on the same chromosome, and their frequency in the population is 0.5 and 0.5. 
So again, because these alleles are in linkage equilibrium, we can assume that they are far away from each other and must behave as if they were on separate chromosomes. Okay, now that you understand linkage equilibrium, let's discuss linkage disequilibrium. Linkage disequilibrium is the tendency of alleles to be transmitted together more or less often than expected by chance alone. This is usually caused by close proximity of genes on the same chromosome. Let's do a question to understand this better. Two regions on the same chromosome are sequenced using PCR. The frequency of the corresponding alleles are then analyzed in a population. The frequency of allele A is found to be 0.5 and the frequency of allele B is 0.5. However, the frequency of AB is found to be 0.49 in the same population. What genetic principle most likely explains this finding? Okay, so this question is very similar to the last one. In the last question, we assumed normal linkage equilibrium, resulting in an AB frequency of 0.25. However, this time we're told that the frequency of AB is 0.49. This is much higher than expected, right? When the frequency of two alleles occurs more or less often than expected, this is called linkage disequilibrium. This is a figure illustrating linkage disequilibrium, which can be found in section three of genetics. Notice that this is very similar to the last figure, but this time the two alleles are shown close together. Because the alleles are close together, there is a decreased chance that recombination will occur. Hopefully this is intuitive there are fewer places where the chromosomes can break, so recombination only occurs a small percentage of the time. In this case, big A, big B stay together 49% of the time, and little a, little b stay together 49% of the time. Only 1% of the time, recombination occurs, allowing for other variants, such as big A, small b, or small a, big b, to occur. So in summary, linkage equilibrium usually occurs when two alleles are far apart on the same chromosome, and linkage disequilibrium usually occurs when two alleles are close together on the same chromosome.